Stoichiometry. It's a terrible sounding word and the sort of thing that strikes fear in the hearts of the best chemistry students. But it's not that tough. We're going to take some time to go over some basics that you've probably gotten in chemistry up to this point and then look at some basic Algebra 1 that you've learned early in high school or before that. We put those things together and it's really not as difficult as a lot of people let on. So just keep an open mind. Let's look at the basics and go from there. Let's look and see what stoichiometry actually measures. Now this is all in relationship to a balanced equation, a reaction. You're talking about atoms. You're talking about the number of molecules. You can be talking about the number of moles or the amount of a substance, product, or reactant. The mass, usually in grams, and when you're working with gas laws, it can measure the volume of a gas. Everything in stoichiometry depends on having a balanced chemical equation. You've got to have that to be able to go and convert any kind of unit of reactant to product or vice versa. Here's the equation we're going to use today. Nitrogen plus hydrogen yields ammonia. The 1, the 3, and the 2 are the coefficients that balance the equation. And we're going to look at atoms. See how you can measure atoms. This you use Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. A mole of any substance is that many atoms. Remember, Avogadro's number, a mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, is just like a dozen. It's that many of anything. Let's look at molecules. If you're working on the molecular level, those coefficients, 1, 3, and 2, give you the ratio of how many of those react together in the equation. Now, rather than individual molecules, moles would be the unit of choice at the macro level. These coefficients then tell you the relative number of moles of the chemicals that react together in the equation. We will use mass in grams, usually, to measure the number of moles. Remember, you'll never gain or lose mass in a normal chemical reaction. And we know at this point you can all find the mass of an atom or a compound from the periodic table. When you're working with gas laws, you can use stoichiometry to calculate the volume of gases at standard temperature and pressure. Molar volume is 22.4 liters per mole of gas at these conditions. Using the coefficients from your balanced equation gives you the mole ratio. And that's what allows you to convert anything in the reaction to anything else. Whether it's particles, whether it's moles, whether it's grams, whether it's liters of gas. Everything depends on the mole ratio. It depends on a balanced chemical equation. Okay, here's our balanced equation again that describes this chemical reaction. And we're going to look at the number of mole ratios you can have. Now the mole ratios are using the coefficients from the balanced equation. You could have for every one nitrogen there's three hydrogen or vice versa. Three hydrogen to two ammonia or vice versa. One nitrogen to two ammonia or vice versa. Now these mole ratios are absolutely the central issue when it comes to doing stoichiometry with chemical reactions. But what other conversion factors have you got? What other tools do you have to use? There aren't that many things you need to be able to figure. You can find grams per mole off the periodic table. You can find the number of particles, Avogadro's number per mole. You can find molar volume of gas at STP. In the little bit of time we've got, let's knock out a couple stoichiometry problems. Here's our unbalanced equation. We've balanced it. 1, 3, and 2 are the coefficients. Let's see. We were given that we have 4 moles of nitrogen. We want to find out how many moles of ammonia would that give us. Start with 4 moles of nitrogen over 1, and we want to get to moles of ammonia in the numerator. How can we convert? 
Okay, we've got moles of nitrogen we want to put in the denominator at the bottom so those cancel out. And the mole ratio would be two moles of ammonia on top for every one mole of nitrogen. Those units of nitrogen cancel out, leaves you with moles of ammonia, which is what you want as your answer in the numerator. Try to always write down your units and make sure they cancel out. Same equation. Let's go for a little more complexity. Let's say this time we're going to take oh say 65 moles of hydrogen is what you're given and you want to find how many grams of ammonia would that give you. Okay start with your given 65 moles of hydrogen over 1. We know we want to get to grams of ammonia. There's our mole ratio for every 3 moles of hydrogen there's 2 moles of ammonia but that's not far enough. Now we've got to find out how many grams per 1 mole of ammonia are there. We'll do the math there. Nitrogen's about 14. Hydrogen's 1. That's 17 grams of ammonia for every 1 mole of ammonia. Okay, we'll do the math there. Remembering it's grams of ammonia we're looking for. Out of our calculator, we get something like 737 grams of ammonia. But knowing that for the 17, you've only got two significant figures, we should round that off to 740. The 2 and the 3 and the mole ratio don't count for your significant figures. Here's the same reaction again. Let's take 405 grams of nitrogen, and we want to know how many grams of ammonia we would get. Let's start with our given over 1. There we're converting 28 grams of nitrogen are equal to one mole of nitrogen. In black is your mole ratio, which is the central issue. One nitrogen to two ammonia. You're converting again your one mole of ammonia to 17 grams of ammonia. And that gets you to where you want to be. You're looking for grams of ammonia. Let's check and make sure that your units cancel, leaving grams of NH3 as your answer, which is what you want. So grams of nitrogen, moles of nitrogen, moles of ammonia, all cancel out. And that leaves you with the grams of NH3 ammonia in the numerator, which is important. Crunch the numbers, do the math, you come up with even more digits than this in your calculator but figuring that I only used 17 as the grams of NH3, I've got to round that to, again to two significant figures, so my answer would be 490. I'm calling this part one because certainly there's a lot more to stoichiometry than what you can cover in under 10 minutes, but I hope that if you've been stuck and maybe a little phobic that this is it's just too difficult, but this will give you the boost, the impetus to go ahead and uh, get into it, uh, see that the math is not that difficult, and succeed in stoichiometry, which is a big part of chemistry. Good luck. <laughs>